Alrighty, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a lot of this on OptiText, and we're gonna take a look at a really great website as well. But I kind of just want to go over the principles a little bit on the board here. So um, let's make a skirt like this. Let's make a little short skirt, and I want to have drapes come from it. Let's have, make give like three little drapes here. Kind of like this, okay? Now, I can do this to create fit as well. So in this instance, these drapes are created by like tucks in the fabric here. The only thing that's really making them construction-wise, like when we're sewing it together, is I'll make a tuck right here, and then the rest of this drape will fall into place once we make it. Now I can also use this to sort of control my fullness and fit because when I create those little tucks, those folded pieces of fabric, I'm bringing in the overall shape of the skirt, um, so again, fitting into the waist. And then as the tuck kind of opens up in these drapes, I'm allowing for added fullness. So this is a fuller area than it is there, and then so I am accounting for fit, and I'm allowing uh, to control fullness um, to be small at the waist and bigger in other areas like my hips and my butt where I need it. So in that sense, I do not need darts. I do not need darts or um, seams for fit because these little drapes are doing it. Okay, so how do I create this? Um, so since the fit is a little trickier on the back, I'm gonna sort of describe how to do it on the back. So let's take our sloper over here. Here's our back sloper. Sorry. And let's assume I've already cropped it to size. So here's, you know, my, uh, and uh, condense my darts just to make it a little bit easier for us all. Now you don't necessarily have to condense those darts, but what are you going to do? Okay, so here is what we're going to do. I want to take this sloper and turn it into this pattern. Remember, um, this is on the half. So um, there's my center back. Uh-oh, it's asymmetrical, isn't it? So to actually draft this pattern, I'm gonna have to open it up. Now it's asymmetrical because this is coming over here. It's not over here. This is not even on both sides. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to open up both sides of my pattern to create this. So I'm gonna erase this to get a little bit of room. Maybe put a little reference up here in the corner so we still know what we're doing. You see that? Yeah, we can see that. And here we go. I'm going to basically take this and open up both sides. Now we're going to always have to do this whenever we're working with asymmetrical patterns. We need both sides. So right now it's symmetrical and I just have both uh, sides of my pattern. And here's my center back. Yes, it's an awful short skirt, but you know, what are you going to do? Okay. Now this is what I'm going to do. Now that I have, of course, I've cropped off the bottom, as I mentioned before, since this is a short skirt, condense the darts if I need to, um, open it up so I have both sides since I'm working on an asymmetric pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draft in what kind of shape I like for these drapes. So these drapes are kind of coming and they're swooping in and they're being kind of long. So where is this? Oh, let's say this is here. Now I, I'm not going... I'm gonna try, at least on this one, to get through that dart tip. It's just gonna make our lives a little bit easier. And you'll see why later. So let's say it starts there, and we're just like, let's give a little reference here. So this is gonna come here. It's gonna end, you know, just about, about right here, okay? Now I might want to go ahead and continue my drape all the way along. Now, depending on how we rotate it, it will really kind of end just here. But okay, now what are we going to do? I'm going to do my other one. Now I don't, I can't start it in here because this is negative space. 
I can start it like right here, right next to my dark, okay? And I'm gonna slash again in this sort of direction. And again, I'm gonna do it, since I need to um, spread this, do you need to do it all the way to the contour? I've got one more little one there. But again, depending on how I rotate it, it's gonna give me a bigger drape or a smaller drape, and we'll take a look at that later. And we're gonna come this. Because this is kind of pointing down to that corner, this is kind of pointing here, and this is gonna kind of point right there. Okay, so what I've actually done is I've now slashed this into um, a few different sections. Um, be nice if I actually did it right to here, but let's see, we have section one, section two, section three, section four, okay? Now I also, I technically have a section five because this is negative space. This is negative space. So since I cut through here, this is actually this little teeny bit right there is a section five. Um, but let's now figure out what we're going to do section by section. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this and we're going to lay out section by section. But so we don't forget how everything is draped. Um, I'm going to put a little sort of reminder of, of this original plan right up here. So I have... Now I got this. Boop, boop, boop. Just I'm just going to draw this over again, really kind of quickly. We have the two darts. We have the center back, and let's put in. We've got this comes down about right here. This is four. We have three coming around here, and we have. This coming around here, two and one. Okay, so that's what we're kind of working with. Let's remember that. And then I'm going to take out each piece and we're going to slash and spread them for drape. So um, I'm going to start with. Um, now again, we don't really have like a piece on the gray, and I'm going to just start with piece number four, which is this one right here, and we're going to keep that one on grain. Why? Uh, why not? Okay, so it'll look like so. We don't have any of the dart in there, so we just have it like this. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to emphasize this point down here. Since I'm not, for this drape, we haven't made any fullness in the hem. The fullness is really existing in the body of the skirt. So this is our piece four, and we're going to keep that one on grain. Why? Well, just because it's the largest piece. I tend to like to keep the largest piece on grain. Sometimes you have to alter it, so once you actually get into fabric, and if it's falling a little bit weird, you have to sort of alter what you're going to do with the grain. But we're just going to keep that one on grain for now. Now I'm going to put in my piece number three, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take piece number three and to create that fullness, I'm going to rotate it out, okay? And again, the fuller the drape and the farther you want it to pass through the garment, the more you're going to rotate it out. So I'm going to take this piece three and rotate it up. So I'm going to keep this point together matched up here at the hem, that's right down there. And we're going to rotate it. And this is the largest one, so I'm going to rotate this out probably the largest amount. Boop, boop, boop. And this is the one that we have the dart in. So it looks like this. And then it comes down. And since we rotate it, this is going to kind of drop like this. A little bit like that. Okay, so what we have is this area is going to become part of our pattern. It's actually going to become this drape. That's the extra fullness that we're adding in that's going to allow for that drape to happen. What we have is we still have a dart here. We don't really want that. There's no darts in our final thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little piece, which is essentially what I was talking about, our piece five, 
and I'm just going to rotate it so the dark legs meet and uh, uh, we can shut it. So I'm going to just close this dart right here by rotating this little piece. And that's why I put this line through that dart just to make that closing of the dart easier. So we'll just close that dart. There's dart leg closed so I don't need it anymore. So we've gotten rid of that. Now it's still sort of in there uh, when we create that tuck. So um, we haven't lost it, it's, it's still there uh, contributing to our fit just in a different way. Okay, so that's our piece number three. Let's go ahead and put our piece number two. Piece number two is right here. And again, it's going to be right here. There's that corner. And I'm going to go ahead and um, rotate it out. It's a little bit smaller, so I'm not going to spread it the same distance. A little bit smaller distance this time. And it's going to come together right here at that point, at that sort of corner side seam hem point right there. Okay? Two. Okay, now we've got one more. We've got one, and that's our tiniest little drape. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle it up just a little bit for a small little drape right there. Okay, so in this instance, we have one, two, three drapes, and because we cut them in this direction, when we close these up like tucks, so when we make this pattern, this whole thing is gonna be our pattern. It's gonna be very important to mark these tucks. Now when these points come together, when we fold those points in the waistline together, that's how we're gonna get those drapes. And because we cut them into the pattern like this, we know that they're gonna fall in this same direction, this same direction that we cut them. And again, the farther that we put them out, the bigger that those drapes are going to be. Now we still have this little dart kicking around here. And honestly, um, it's a little small and back to if, uh, uh, close it off. So if you had, it'd be really easy on paper to close it up if this slash had come through here instead. And you could do just the same thing as you did over there. Um, you can in OptiTex kind of just close it, close this dart, because we do have this extra fullness, so it shouldn't be an issue, too much of an issue. Or if you're really worried about fitting that side, you can just, you can leave it in, although that doesn't look so nice. So I would just sort of close it, or keep your slash through there, or you can um, uh, basically add it into this uh, by almost sort of like, cutting a little bit here, rotating it, and then adding sort of a fullness here. So basically, um, sort of cutting this, rotating the dart closed here, so this tuck becomes a little bit bigger. And then it actually opens up here, which makes this tuck more full. So this kind of becomes open. Uh, and uh, again, the tuck becomes a little bit more full, a little bit more open, but I guess for the fit there, you might want that anyways. Um, so there's a lot of uh, little solutions that you can have to um, uh, uh, fix that sort of dart problem. But all in all, I kind of want to focus on when you cut in this direction and then slash it out, you create these sort of drapes um, that can be created by putting in tucks. And the direction that you cut is the direction that the drape will form, and the size of the drape is how big you slash it. So that's our sort of basic Thing. So let's take a look at a couple other things. I'm going to switch views now um, to my screen. And let's get rid of that. Oh, display. Sorry, guys. Uh, there we are. Um, and there's a couple things I want to show you. We're going to do one little OptiText draft, too, with a very similar draft. But I want to show you um, a really great resource. It's something that I absolutely adore. Um, it's a website, it's unfortunately no longer has hosting, um, but it is one of the just most wonderful uh, pattern making resources uh, I found. 
<laughs> it is free and it's on the internet, which is, you know, that's what I love. Um, but because the website itself, with this is the website, it's lost hosting. So to find it, what you have to do is you have to go to the Wayback Machine. Now the Wayback Machine, if you have never heard about it, is actually pretty cool. So if you guys want to um, uh, learn about what the internet was like, potentially even before you were born, uh, you can go to the Wayback Machine. And what the Wayback Machine does is it archives certain sites um, for, poster for posterity. So if you want to sort of check out what you know uh, the internet was like in the 90s or whatever, find that in internet 90s page. Um, uh, look it up and uh, you can find it here. So what it does is it takes like snapshots of the internet um, and, and hosts them here. So because the site lost its, its own hosting money, it's no longer there if you just look for it. But if you look for it on the Wayback Machine, they've taken snapshots of what it used to be. So what you want to look for is vintage sewing. And it is uh, this, this vintage sewing info right here. It should be the first thing that pops up. And you're going to click on it and wait. And it's uh, going to sort of show a little bit of a timeline on top of when it's taken uh, uh, different captures or different little um, uh, spots on it. So this is what it looks like now, which doesn't look like much, but if we go back to 2004, so here's the date. So here's way back in 2005, or, you know, that's far, plenty far. It's going to show us what it looked like back then, and this is what it looked like back then. And um, it has uh, textbooks. Um, on many different sewing and pattern related subjects throughout the early uh, 20th century. Um, and they're so interesting, some, you know, just to sort of look through them and, and things like that. But there is one, um, you know, you know, little courses on glove making and, and school textbooks and dressmaking and sewing courses for way back when. Um, but their pattern design, they have one pattern design book that is absolutely fantastic. So you go here, and here's sort of um, the extended contents of what they have. Um, this, the 1942 Modern Pattern Design, is absolutely fantastic. It's an absolutely fantastic resource. I have it open right here to the skirt section, so I'm just going to jump over here. And let's go to the top to just look it over. Now they have this, uh, this is the skirts chapter, and they have it on bodices, suit jackets, coats, um, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it's, it's pretty much everything you wanted to know about pattern making wovens. There's not a ton of stuff about knits or draping or drafting knits. This is 1942. Knits were still kind of new to the fashion design scene. Um, they existed, of course, there were sweaters, um, but they were just knitwear in itself was not as big a part of everybody's um, sort of wardrobe as they are now. Um, so it's basically just going over definitions. Uh, they have their own sloper um, uh, instructions here for a skirt. It's much more simple. So here's their uh, basic skirt sloper, and you can see if there's no dart in the front and there's just one singular dart in the back, so it's very, very simple. This is basically the instructions on how to make the sloper. This is how to adjust the fit depending on form. So um, here we have, you know, Mrs. Slim, Mrs. Average, Mrs. Plump, and, and Mrs. Heavy, and how the difference uh, in the actual pattern will be to adjust uh, to each body part, uh, each body type. So pretty interesting. Uh, problems and fit. So if you're, you know, if your garment's doing something like this or something like this, how to fix it. And then we get into um, some more drafting thing, uh, drafting aspects as we go back. This was um, this is another way to do dart manipulation. 
um, without the math. I just think the math is a little bit simpler. I'm just going to, uh, if you click on the pictures, it gives you an enlarged version. But if you absolutely hate math, like simple addition, you can actually um, make multiple darts this way. So basically what they did is they slashed where they wanted the new darts and they rotated these little um, like strips in. And as you rotated those little strips in, it kind of closes up that original dart a little bit, but allows for the uh, new darts to form. So um, you get one, two, three darts now instead of one dart. That's, it's just an alternate way of doing it. I find just you know dividing up the, the total dart intake a little bit easier, but again, um, an, just an alternate way if you guys like to do that. Uh, wrap around, so this is the draft for the wrap around. They're showing it right there. Um, but I kind of want to get to, this is um, for full, full kind of dirndl skirt. They're showing the draft here. We're going to separate, separate it here. So we're, we're slashing and spread it. So this is a basic uh, slash and spread. So if we take a look here, um, uh, let me just describe what's going on here. So this should look fairly familiar. It's slightly different from a couple of things that we did because they added fullness at the waist. So what they did is they slashed up um, uh, and spread it out a little bit more here at the hem to create a, a fuller, wider kind of A-line uh, draft here, but they're still shirring here at the waist. So there's still, they, uh, instead of matching those dart points, they left space in between this, they didn't bother to close the dart, um, so we have extra fullness in this waistline that needs to be shirred, and it's going to create these little gathers up here at the top. Um, let's go down and take a look at some of the other ones. This is how to draft a full circle skirt. Um, here's just the basic flares. This is pretty much exactly how I, I, I talked to you guys about doing the uh, basic flare. Closing the dart. Um, gourd skirts. We haven't talked about gourd skirts, but they're going to talk about them right now. Let me do a um, four-part gore where they tacked on a little bit of fullness in each gore to give it a, a flare. Gore skirts are pretty much just, you know, they're pretty much just a princess seam. So it was cut just like a princess seam. And then each panel was um, kicked out a little bit at the hem to give it that a little bit of an A-line uh, flare at the bottom. And they're actually drafting it. Eight gores, if four gores was not enough for you. Oh my goodness, 10 gores, so many gores. Uh, varied gores, variations of gourds. So this is actually very similar to a draft that we did. Um, and you can see how they did it here. Um, uh, this is the front, this is the back. They made sure that this little line is going right through that dart point. So it made it easy to just simply close that dart um, uh, later on. So uh, we did a, a draft in OptiTex. Um, uh, not in OptiTex, I did it on the board, um, almost exactly like that. Another variation of that. Um, this, all these variations are almost exactly like the um, flare variations that I went over. This is uh, extraordinarily like the one of the mermaid uh, variations that I did. Um, uh, so here's an example of um, uneven fullness. So the fullness is, let's just click on that, is, ver is just in a couple locations. So just right here and right here. So we can see how that sort of played out. We kicked open and we spread our flounce arc really, really wide in that area, but we didn't do anything else too much in any other location. Okay, so I want to come down again. This is really great. As you can see, it's, it's, it's you know, draft after draft after draft. Um, and it has a lot of really fun uh, old methods. This is where you have to do a little kick pleat. Pleated insets, how to draft them. Um, and since it really has, you know, uh, uh, I understand it's from 1942, so a lot of these things are a little bit old-fashioned. Old but it has so many interesting techniques that people really just have gotten lazy and clothing has gotten like there's so much fast fashion and there's so much um, uh, uh, um, 
just a, a push to just get it out there, get it out there, that a lot of the kind of carefulness and cleverness in clothing construction has really gone away. So there's a lot of stuff that's really very interesting that you don't really see today or wouldn't be aware of. Like, Lauren, when was the last time you saw a little pleated inset like this, asymmetrical pleated inset like that? It's gorgeous. And again, it's a little old fashioned with the long hemlines and everything else, but you can modernize these things really, really easily. And, you know, let's put, let's put you know, interesting construction and innovative design and in complex construction uh, back into our lexicon because I miss it. I miss nice clothing. Um, it's all just so cheap and boring uh, today, unfortunately. Um, so I'm coming down, I want to come back, and I'm, I'm going to focus on this, so now we're getting into uh, what I'm sort of going over, and I'm actually going to, I saved this picture on my little flash drive, I'm going to make this peg skirt, because it it's basically a fantastic example of what I went over on the board. Um, this little peg skirt um, uh, gets rid of all the darts in the pattern, and um, uh, trades them in for these lovely little drapes coming down here uh, on both sides. So um, we can see how there's the slashes are made, uh, the directional slashes are made, and then they're spread to create the fullness for our drapes. So again, this is a different version of what I showed you, but it, the exact same technique. And I want to show you how to do that in Optitex. Um, but I'm just going to uh, plow through here just to sort of show you. And I really encourage all you guys to go here uh, to look at this. I mean, look at this design. This is fantastic. Um, uh, what, what a great design, um, uh, so specific, so artistic in its um, uh, nature and details. You really just wouldn't see this today uh, very much. Shows you how to cut in, uh, cut in this shape, um, uh, uh, arrange the fit for it, add in, you know, slash add in uh, and spread the ruffles here. Um, and then it's also showing you how to slash these and you're going to want to uh, slash along these lines and then spread to create the shirring uh, as well, that little shirred area up there. This is showing you how to create fullness for shirring right here for here. And look at this, it even shows you how to do the little cascade. It's beautiful, just beautiful. Um, so many fun things, and again, this is just the skirt section, um, and it's it's super comprehensive. Um, uh, uh, really, really, guys, just write this down in your notes because um, you know it's so hard. It is so so hard to find really good pattern making information. Um, it's just one of those trades that everyone just sort of you know learns from somebody else and has their own notes and blah 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 blah. That's why I'm a very huge fan of the pattern making book that um, is required for this course. Um, but in addition to that, this is, that's really good for like really standard stuff. But this is just a treasure trove of just unique little details that you might not have even thought about. Like really who thought about, um, uh, you know, this sort of little flounce, this, you know, it, it, you know, uneven fullness with the little inset and everything. It's just so cute. It's, you know, not even if you're looking um, for pattern information, just if you're looking for um, garment inspiration um, uh, uh, and to familiarize yourself with maybe some more esoteric little garment construction stuff like that. It's just so interesting. And this is only one, so this is one section of one textbook that they even have offered on this uh, source. So take a look at it. It's one of my favorites. Um, can't really recommend it enough. I just, I just absolutely love all the little uh, drafts they have for you. All right, um, let's head on over to M119. Let's get on campus. And I'm just going to do that quick peg draft that I, I was showing you. That's just a really good demonstration of uh, just, just this topic of uh, slash and spread used for drapery and tucks. So peg, um, you might have heard the term peg, peg pants, peg skirt. Um, it really just refers to, uh, let's open it up so I can show you, uh, let's remember, and we'll keep it open just so I have a little guide as well. Um, open up. 
Uh, it refers to any sort of silhouette. It usually has tucks coming from the waist, and it kind of has this, um, you know, a pinched-in waist uh, with a quick uh, um, explosion into fullness within the hips, and then it will come down and taper uh, down by the ankles or wherever the hem is. Open up. Come on, come on. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so I'm going to open up that little picture. La, la, la. Where is it? Peg. There it is. So I just copied this off the website and brought it in here for reference. And um, and we'll make it. So I just want to describe it a little bit as soon as it opens uh, to what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be looking for. All right. Well, I'll let that do its thing. There we are. So um, here's the back, here's the front. Now again, it's gonna be a little bit different um, because uh, uh, my sloper's a little bit different. I have a sloper with two darts here and, and two darts here. Um, so it is gonna be a little bit different um, than, than this one, but that's okay, that's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. Um, so a couple things to note. Um, what this pattern actually does is it eliminates the side seam. So this is how I cut the pattern, and then this is how I spread it out. And see, it's noting here that this is the center back, and this is the center front. But now, at this point, my center back and center front are, are a seam, and they're no longer on grain. So here's the grain line down here. Isn't that amazing? All these little sketches are hand-drawn. All the little notes are hand-drawn. Um, so the grain line is actually aligned with my side seam, um, which is not uncommon for a, a skirt like this, a peg skirt like this, um, but it's uh, slightly unusual, especially uh, compared to the drafts that we've done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my sloper in Optitex, and it should, shouldn't take too long to do this. We'll just hang out here. To, oh, good. Opened up pretty quickly. I was actually ready to wait a little while. So we're going to open up my skirt sloper. Hopefully I saved the uh, pristine one. I think I did. Okay, cool. So, um... I think for this draft, I'm gonna make it not full length. And the only reason I'm really doing is that is so um, I can zoom in a little bit closer to details. Is it really gonna make that much of a difference? Let's see. So this is full length and um, in the image it's full length too. Uh, yeah, let's just do full length. Okay, so um, here's my back, here's my front. Okay, so what's the first thing I kind of want to do? The first thing I kind of want to do is I want to do this. So here's my basic sloper. What they've done is to accentuate this sort of poof out along or just under the hips in this one. Maybe I'll raise mine up because we like big hips. So I want to accentuate right where the, the uh, uh, have a higher little bit of a uh, uh, draft. Actually, well, what? Let's keep it as close to maybe as, as this as possible. But what they've done, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bump this up just a little bit. They padded out the silhouette here to sort of because see how this goes out and then in um, uh, uh, quite dramatically. So what I want to do is I want to accentuate that silhouette by sort of padding out the sloper around here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it in a little bit down here. Um, again, just to accentuate that um, uh, taperedness. Now, I don't want to do it too much because this is already looking pretty um, slim when it comes to walking ease. We do have this little slit coming up in the front, just a hint of it. Um, I'm probably going to accentuate mine too, just to add a little bit more walking ease. But what I'm going to do, again, is I'm going to add that fullness, and I'm going to parallel my uh, two slopers and make sure that however I'm padding these out, it's gonna be even on, whatever I do is even on the front and back. So I'm gonna align them, and I'm gonna go ahead and 
draft out. I guess I'll start on my front. And yes, I'm just going to sort of pat it out a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy. Again, if I want it super big, I could, do, you know, the, the, the more full you want it. Again, I'm going to raise that fullness to be a little bit more along the hip line than it was before. And then let's bring this kind of down a little bit. And then I'm going to take it in just a wee bit right there. Yes. Okay. And then right click, finish drafting. So I have my extended part here, and then I have to cut a little bit off here. So to get the same on the back, I'm going to drop down some guidelines on where things are happening. So here I did this. I put a point there, which is going to be recommend be like a little bit of my fullness. I put this here, and then it was straight from there. And then it intersects at this point. So I'm going to use these guidelines to help me create the same sort of uh, shape addition. Now, I'm going to just sort of eyeball. This should be pushed out the same amount. So, but I'm going to eyeball it because I, I really should measure out how much I push this out here. But again, since I'm just doing this as a quick draft, uh, just to really demonstrate technique more than anything else, I'm going to just kind of eyeball it. I can move it um, later on if it's different. So that actually is that's a good compromise because whoop, I look like I did it a bit too much. And let's keep that about right there. And then I will need this. Now I curved that, so but that's okay because I'm gonna keep this about like right here. And then I know it looks a little weird, but that is mostly because I accidentally uh, curved something I shouldn't have curved. This point I curved, and I'm just going to go ahead and uncurve it. Okay, so this is peeking out too much. So I'm going to go ahead and just fix that. And again, that's the nice point about using our draft tool is we um, can draft things first, and we don't have to add them until they're perfect. So that's 1.82. So I want this to be 1.82, so let's see what it is. Um, it is too much. It is uh, almost one and know, one and a third too much. So I'm going to use my move point tool to move it back in a little bit. So I just grab it, boop, and let's move it to where it looks much similar. Now again, I'm looking this to be about 1.8. That's fine. That looks good. So again, now my shapes are very, very similar. Now at this point, I can go ahead and um, start building the pieces out. So if I, since I don't want to click a million times, I'm just going to get rid of my guidelines and grab my build piece tool and build it out. And then use my join piece tool to add it back on. Ooh, that's not exactly what I wanted. What happened here? Let me zoom in to make sure I'm doing the right thing. it down here then. Oh no, I can't because there's no point there. Oh, is it because there's no, oh well, no, there is a point there. Hmm, hold on. Let's, let's try joining it along the hip point. Well, that looks good. I'll do the same thing down here. Use that hip point, I guess. 
And then there we go. Now since we drafted that line, it might get a little messy up here, um, so we might need to clean it up a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So um, next thing I am going to do is I'm just going to finish off that, that overall shape change by cutting off this. And again, I want to be careful with not bringing that in too much because I still want to be able to walk in this. But again, that slit we're going to put in the center front will help us a little bit. And then we're just going to delete away those uh, this area because, of course, I don't need it. I'm taking this off. I'm just deleting them away. Okay, so um, there we are. I've pushed it out. Probably want to smooth this out just a little bit here. It looks a little, little rough right in there so i'm going to just zoom in on that area and use my move point tool just to sort of clean that smooth that up a little bit and we'll pull that out pull this out that looks better and let's clean up these guys because i don't need or want them hanging out Good enough. Okay, so um, let's take a look at our picture. So that's what we did first. We added this bit and then we took it in. Now what we want to do is we want to cut in our slashes uh, just like so. Okay, now um, to make this easy, what, or let's look at what they've done is they've made sure to go through the dart point. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Now, if it's a little tricky, I can always make more, fewer or more. So what I want to do is I'm going to, um, let's zoom on, and then I'm going to zoom in on the areas that I want. Um, I also want, uh, if we take a look, sorry, I'm going to just pop back here. When, uh, so a couple things, I'm going to make them through the, go through the dark point. Now, but I also want to make them kind of match up here along the side seam, okay? Now, like everything else, I'm going to go ahead and, um, let's, see, let's clear my guidelines so I not, don't have them. So uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down. We have three drapes, and I'm going to drop down my guidelines to, like, basically where I want my drapes to go along the side seam. And I'm doing this so again, they'll be matched up, oh, just like that, um, uh, with the side. That looks pretty good, pretty even. Move that up just a little bit right there. Okay, so um, again, I'm gonna draft before I cut because I want them to really look nice. Um, I'm not gonna move my pattern pieces at all because I don't want them to get off of their, um, guidelines, but I'm going to take a look right in here, and I'm going to use my pen tool, and let's just take a quick look here. So we have our first uh, draft closest to the side seam, kind of just scooting in right there, boop, boop, boop. or maybe we'll start with the uh, hardest one, which will be the, um, uh, um, the dart one. Now what I am going to do, I think, just sort of looking at this, is it's going to be easier for me to start to condense the darts. So what does that mean? That means on my back piece, I'm going to um, condense it into one dart. Um, and I'm just going to see, let's see, I'm going to keep it right here. So if we have this first one kind of come here. And then we'll have it go down to the deep one, and then this one kind of come here, and then this one kind of be a little bit smaller coming from there. Um, so let's remember our darts on the back were two in or one inch a piece, so I'm going to condense it down into one two inch dart. And I'm going to keep it starting at that same uh, point right there. So um, this point I'm keeping, and then. Put in that, Let's make it a grating, and that's our next point. So we want it two inches from that. Okie dokie. And let's put our new dart in. Boop, boop, boop. 
That was about five and a half inches. Okay, great. Um, and then here I might just get rid of these guys. Oh, well, maybe I'll convince them too. It's probably the more proper thing to do. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to start here, and again, I want to pass through that tip. And I'm going to kind of curve it as we go. Do you want to pass through that tip? I'm going to go down. It's a little wonky. I'm probably going to have to uh, smooth this out a bit. Definitely going to have to smooth that out. I want it to be really cut. I don't want it to be so wiggly. The drapes don't like to be wiggly. There we go. Smooth sort of sloping. So again, I'm passing through that dart point. Fantastic. I'm going to start right at the edge of this dart uh, and go ahead. And we're going to make this come down to about right there. Right click, finish crafting. And one more little one right at the side. Now if I want my distance between my tucks to be even, let's take a look because uh, I have this distance which is from the center front, this distance from this distance is uh, uh, 1.63, okay? Now this dart is negative space so it's going away so this and this is actually the distance between my first tuck and my second tuck. So if I want them, I'm going to measure out that same distance. So the distance from my first tuck to my second tuck is the same as the distance from my second tuck to my third tuck. I'm just going to uh, kind of even that out too there a little bit, a little bit more like that. All right, so I'm going to place a point. 1.6 from my next. So my distance will be even. Grab my draft tool and we'll do that last little drape. Eee, coming right down there like that. Okay, so there we are, one, two, three. Um, uh, next step we'll cut them out, but let's do the uh, Let's do the top first, or the front first, draft it out. Um, I am going to commence this dart. You do sort of have the option to, as I told you, get rid of the darts on the front uh, if you want. But actually, I think I'm going to. So if you want to get rid of the darts on front, just close them. Now again, you can only do this on front. Only, only, only do this on front. Let's see how distorted that makes it. Not too bad, not too bad. You cannot do this on the back. We have too much to fit around on the back. We can do this on the front. Now I'm just going to, it did rotate it a little bit when I close it, see? My front is no longer straight, and I would like it to be straight. I want to keep it straight right there like that. So I'm going to just use my rotate piece tool and rotate this back just straight. Just a one degree turn is all it took. Okay. Now you do see what happens. See, this is my hip line. And this is what happens when you take uh, away the darts in the front. So the darts in the front, remember, are there uh, to stabilize the cross grain in your sloper pattern. See how this was my, my hip line and was also a, a marker for my cross grain? Um, it's, it's now askew, and that's, it will happen if you do that. But for the most part, it's okay if you don't absolutely need a... Um, perfectly horizontal cross grain in your skirt. Okay, anyway, let's get back to cutting. Um, I want them to be fairly the same as the back, so let's take a couple measurements so I know what the distance between these guys is, but let's see what the distance from center front is. It's 1.5. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make all these non-grading so I can put in my own measurements 
and I'll know exactly where to click for my drape. So my first drape is going to be 1.5 from center front, which is my previous. And my next is going to be 1.6. Ooh, pretty close. And 1.6 again. Okay. So that's where my dra dra uh, drapes are going to be. This going to be come down, and again without the dart, it just it does make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to sort of mirror that drape coming down, boop, and let's do the next one. Bring that up here, and right click, finish drafting. And one more. And we're getting down. We're getting there, guys. We're getting almost done with the first step. Okay, so I'm going to cut. Actually, let's just make that a little bit more. There we go. Um, let's cut these lines. Give them a last look over. Make sure they're uh, what I like. I don't need to do it. So I'm going to grab my cut piece tool. And again, whenever you are drafting first and then using your cut piece tool, you want to be sure to use the same points that uh, you used when drafting, or else there's really no point in you drafting. Um, use the same point locations, go over them exactly, exactly, and then you'll be cutting the line that you drafted. And again, I'm not bothering with seam allowance right now. Um, because there's not going to be seam allowance on these pieces anyways. These are going to be part of our pattern piece. They're going to be part of our tuck. I have done my first step. So I did everything in this first step. I made these cuts. I padded the silhouette here, took away from the silhouette here to emphasize this sort of uh, uh, um, peg, peg shaped silhouette. And now I'm here on step two. So what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to, I'm going to set out a guideline that's going to serve as my uh, grain line for my side seam. And what I want to do is I kind of want to align all of my pieces with that um, grain line. I'm going to align, this, align the side seam. And as I do that, it's going to force um, drapes open here for every piece. Now what they've also done is, look here, they've closed this dart. They did it with little pins, but I'm going to do it with the power of Optitex because that didn't exist back then. Um, so I, that's the first thing I'm going to do just to keep it neat and organized. So I'm going to select this dart and I'm going to go to tools and uh, darts and close darts. Boop. Okay, it's going to make it a little bit wonky, but don't worry. I'm just going to set that sort of back a little bit more sort of right here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, delete our guidelines again, just so we keep clean. And I'm going to draw out a vertical guideline that is going to serve as our grain line now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to line up our pieces. So I'm going to take this piece, this is the front. Now remember which is your front and which is your back, especially since I didn't do a terribly good job um, labeling these. And it's also opposite to what the picture is. And I'm going to just try to line up, and now this is a little hard because it's curved, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do it the best that I can, um, and line up this seam with that grain line. Just a little bit, maybe, just like that. Okay. And we're going to line that up just like right there, okay? I'm going to do the same thing here. This looks a little longer, which is a little weird because we planned that out. Should have been a little bit better, but that should be okay. I don't know why 
before that happened. We did those little grain line things, which should have prevented that. It should be okay. So I'm going to line up. I'm definitely going to, no matter what, line up these guys here. Now, if there's a little bit of a space, that's okay. But you don't want the too much... Um, difference in you. We want to preserve your waist. So it's going to be important that these guys line up. And then moving downwards, you don't want overlap. A little bit of gap like this is fine. That's just going to create extra fullness in the, the hip. So that is fine. That little fullness is fine right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to take Zoom in a little bit closer on our next piece, which is this guy. This guy, we're, yeah, we're going to have to rotate it a little bit up. And let's try to just align. And again, these, especially on the hip, and because we, we made that extra fullness on the hip, it's not going to line up perfectly. It's not a straight line. But we're going to do our best. That probably needs a little bit more. That's too tiny. A little bit more. Maybe about right there. How's that going to look? I think that's going to look good. And I don't want it to, I, this I kind of, I want to match it up pretty close here because I don't want it to get too long either. So we're going to keep that there. Do this guy, move this into place. Do, do, do. That looks pretty good. And this should be about the same as this. Again, if you want your uh, tucks to be, or drapes to be even from one side to the other. This is a little bit bigger. That's okay because it is the back. And since we have a little bit more to work around, I'm kind of okay with the tucks on back being a little bit bigger. Okay, and then we're gonna go and this, so this is starting to sort of curve in. So this is gonna be a little bit counterintuitive. It's gonna start to come away from that grain line a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, little bit. Um, but that's okay. We're going to kind of just bring it in there. And we'll do the same thing over here. Oh, I've got a little tail on this one. That's okay. We'll clean that up. That looks looking awful big, so let's rotate it a little bit more. Bring this into place. This out a little bit. Don't want too much of an overlap. A little bit's okay, especially when we start to get out a little bit like that. And these guys will be brought in just a little bit too. Yeah, depending on how much we took it in. Alright, let's zoom out a little bit so I can see what's going on. I probably should have done these guys first. It's looking like these ones are going to be a lot bigger. Oop, see how it's coming in like that? I don't want that. Oh, come on now. Ugh. Really, Alti Tech. Sometimes Alti Tech just doesn't want to do the things that you want to do unless you're super zoomed in. Sometimes you don't want to be super zoomed in. Also.
You see it's starting to curve the hemline a little bit. That's fine. That should happen. All right. See, that looks weird. I know, but that's because we did the dart, remember? So that's okay. Don't worry about that. Oops. Not what I wanted to have. I don't want to get rid of this thing. Really? Really? Why? Why? So obviously needs a lot of cleaning up. Actually, I'm not going to worry too much about the cleaning up because I'm going to use this as a template. Um, and it's really probably boring for you guys to watch me just do cleaning up stuff. But let's take a look at what we have. Um, and let's take a look at our little guide. So we are basically finished with this right here. This spreading out, which has created all of our little tucks. Boop, 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 boop. Last thing we want to do is we want to shape the center front a little bit. So we cut this off, it's showing to cut that off, and that's just giving that little group uh, shape in it, that little sort of uh, 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 pinch in, otherwise it would be straight across if we left it like this. But we want to add to the walking ease, especially since we took some of this out here to create that narrow shape. So we're just going to pop on back here and zoom in on my center front, which remember is on this separate side and this one. And I'm not going to do anything special here, I'm just going to cut maybe from here give us a little extra walking ease since this is going to be kind of a little bit short on the walking ease she might have to hobble around a little bit all right that's it now all we got to do is uh, protect this whole thing so I'm just going to uh, drag uh, out a box uh, that will encompass everything Go to pieces and protect them. That should protect them all at once, except for this little guy I didn't get. All right, that's protected everything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool and just go ahead and start drafting. And then there we go. That's my pattern piece, front and back, right there. Um, obviously, there's a lot of labeling I need to do. I need to fix the grain first off. Um, and while it's here, so before I uh, before I take this piece off, I'm going to do a lot of labeling. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put notches um, up here on the waistline. So I know where all of my tucks are. So let's add a notch tool. Notch, notch, yeah, yeah, yeah. Notch, 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 notch. Okay, so now I know that this notch meets this notch when I put this together to create these drapes, okay? Um, now that I have those, I can actually probably take it out. Let me take it off. Beep. And that's what our finished pattern piece will look like. Um, let's fix the grain. Come on. I'm just using this as a guide. Remember, this is the grain line we used, so I'm still using it. Huh? Interesting. So, okay, fine. I have to do it on this piece, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this instead. So, kept wanting to change the grain. Okay. So there we go. And then this is, you know, our peg skirt, and so I'll name it peg. We are obviously going to need to know what's the center front and the center back. So I label this center front, I label this center back, and then we throw on seam allowance. Let's just give it a half inch all the way around for right now. All right, 
And again, so there we are. We have drafted our lovely little peg skirt, which looks like this. Um, this has a little like furry trim or something down here that we didn't add a pattern piece for, but you know, whatever else. Um, and of course, this is just from here down. We didn't do any of this this stuff up here. This draft is just showing the, the bottom half of this right here. Um, uh, so another example of uh, basically slash and spread, uh, but in this instance, we're using it to create drapes that kind of get reined in with pucks. Um, and uh, we can do this, you know, um, again, I'm focusing on skirts because we're focused on skirts now, but you can do the same thing on dresses and tops and things like that. So um, sky's the limit. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with another little uh, video just